What's up, gang? It's another Smashworks day, Smashworks Tuesday. Hey, listen, I'm gonna just do something here, but uh, you gotta see this. This is what we get in CrossFit. Look at this. <laughs> Seriously, isn't that awesome? That's the most mobile person in this entire gym, just to let you know. That's the most mobile person. So listen, we're gonna be talking about shoulder mobility. So, just so you see, we do everything really big in CrossFit. That's how we cool things off. <laughs> Mind you, if you aren't in California, Everything is just boom, super cold. So anyway, we're talking about shoulder mobility, getting into that super good overhead position. So if I back up a little bit, check this out. When you get into overhead position, your shoulders should be nice and straight. You're not going to be doing a lot of hinging around the shoulder if you're going to be doing anything that involves, you know, folding in half. If you're, if you're changing position, you should be changing position with this being rigid, just to give you an idea of how your shoulders are supposed to be. They should be nice and rigid, and you should change at the torso versus this. Because this puts a lot of stress on the joint. Remember what we said, primary engines, right? Hips, shoulders, super, super important. The dilemma is we start getting overhead, but we start ending up doing our thrusters out here, we do our jerks here, and we wind up recovering in this position. So we wind up arching at that thoracic, that thoracolumbar junction. That becomes all beat up. We start to beat up the cervical spine where the cervical spine joins the thoracic spine. That gets all beat up. The mechanics of the shoulder get all beat up because they wind up sitting forward and they chew up the joint because we lose all that overhead position. So I can give you probably about 150 different mobilities, uh, mobility drills and, and strengthening drills and all kinds of stuff that are gonna help that shoulder. I'm gonna give you three, and they are the ultimate three. These are probably the easiest things on earth to do because you can do them anywhere, and they're gonna help with your shoulder mobility probably more than anything else. They're so friggin' easy. But they help recover that overhead position, and what they do is they peel away all the tissue that's gluing down that scapula. Remember, scapula is the shoulder, shoulder is the scapula. So as that scapula sits on that rib cage, it's gotta float around, up, down, side to side, and then rotation, right? Those six ranges of motion. If you don't have those six ranges of motion, your shoulder mechanics, you can't get into this position. You wind up being here because the shoulder gets dumped forward. As it sits forward, that glenoid fossa angles forward, head of the uh, humerus angles forward, and you start to get all these pinches and all kinds of funky, gnarly pains in here. So if you ever feel a super bad bark right up in here, yeah, it's because your shoulder mechanics are super bad. So check this out. We're gonna peel away the lat, the teres, the subscap, the pec major, pec minor, all this stuff, all in one move. There's two variations of this stuff. And this is so freakishly easy. Let's move this just like that. I'm gonna move this big ass fan, even though it's not technically a big ass fan, so hopefully they don't get pissed off at me for swiping their name brand. But hey, here's what it is. So you're gonna take a band, you're gonna do two variations of this. Number one is pronated, number two is supinated. Remember, pronated down, supinated up. You're gonna take the band, it's gonna go just distal to the elbow. Distal means a little further away. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna push out as hard as you can. I'm gonna give you four things today, by the way, so sorry for the uh, misdirection. Just pretend I'm Chris Angel. So you're gonna go as wide as you can, get your head through the band. Now all I'm gonna do is, I'm, so if you look, I'm about shoulder width apart. All you're gonna do is get your head through the band and you're just gonna let gravity take over. How long do we hang like this? Two minutes. Yeah, everything's two minutes, even the hang. And we just hang in there like this. What I don't want you to do is this or this. Just let gravity, don't active shoulder, nothing. Just let gravity hang out and drag you into the ground. When you're done, my feet are really close to the floor. I'm just gonna stand up. That's number one. Number two is turn your palms around. Now this is a more advanced version. This is much, much worse because it's really gonna peel away all that stuff. So you're gonna go wide. This one's a little wider. She's going slightly wider than shoulder width. This one's gonna hit the wrist. So if you have a wrist issue, this will wake it up like crazy. And if it's really bad, don't do it. If it's not too bad, then go ahead and do it. Same thing. How long do we hang like this? Two minutes. I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch me do this for two minutes. But trust me, super legit. That's one A, the one B. Now check out this. This is super cool. We're gonna peel away the tricep, that long head of the tricep. Remember, it hits that infraglenoid tubercle, right on that, uh, on that glenoid fossa. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come all the way up, looped into the elbow, grab the back of the head, make sure this is sitting like that. So what we're not doing is we're not pulling out like this, we're pulling up and over. Now you're gonna feel that all in here. You might feel a little pinch in the back of the shoulder. How long do we hang out like this? 
Two minutes. Yeah. This is so horrible. I think I might just hang out here, make you guys watch. Just tell you guys a big old story. You're gonna find one side worse than the other. And it's probably gonna be the side that you guys are using your cell phones on, your keyboards on, and your mouse is on, your phone is on, and the shifter in the car is on, all that stuff. But remember, hang out, it's gonna peel away all this stuff and recover a lot of that overhead position. That's number two. Number three is, I'm gonna make you hang out here for a second. Uh, I would put the kettlebells close to there. Yeah, see, I just make you stand and watch and wait. But what you're gonna do, see if I can angle this just right. Actually, you know what I can do? Check this out. This is just on the fly smash works. You gotta love this stuff. Friggin' awesome. I know this is the quietest I've been in probably any video I've ever done. So you're gonna take a foam roll, you're gonna put it up on the wall. So what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be going like this and then all the way back. Except you notice I got a band between my hands. So you're gonna take the band this is gonna recover a ton of shoulder motion. So you're gonna set this in front of you, just at about head height. You're gonna pull apart with the bands. So you can see I got the bands apart. I'm gonna lean into this just a little bit, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up, and then I'm gonna come back down. So I'm gonna go all the way up, and all the way back down. So all I'm doing is I'm working on external rotation and taking the scapula through a bunch of ranges of motion and taking the humerus through ranges of motion. And what's going on is when I'm doing this, I'm hitting all those reflexive stabilizers to make the scapula a lot more sturdy, which makes our overhead position a lot better. All the way up, all the way down. How many sets of 10? Three. How long do we do all the stretches? Two minutes. It's just that easy. Hey, listen, I'm Trev, Smashworks. You gotta say goodbye to baby. Look at that. Yeah, see, Smashworks mini style. Hey, I'm Trev, Smashworks. I'll check you guys out tomorrow.